How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about SoFi which was down 5.5% on the day. We've been seeing a lot of selling pressure in these markets. It has come down to levels that we have spoken about. So of course I got to give you guys an update. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder, you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the technical analysis. We're gonna be taking a look at the overall price action. We wanna know support, we wanna know resistance, we wanna know what it looks like in a bearish case scenario and as well as in a bullish case scenario. And then we're gonna be going on Fintel, taking a look at the recent short interest information. The reason why this is important because it does have an impact on the way the stock performs. And then we're gonna be taking a look at the order flow distribution. We wanna know the buying and the selling behavior on the retail side, and as well as on the institutional side. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts, and as well as some more details, so let's get to it. So we're gonna do a technical analysis for SoFi. Let's see how it performed on the day. So it ended up closing at $5.61, being down 5.56%. On the low, it tested $5.35, and then on the high, testing $5.00, and 74 cents when we take a look at the volume stats on the day you can see we traded at 50.827 million shares and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 37.147 million shares so we had above average volume on the day but you can see we dealt with some selling pressure now when we take a look at our chart which is a daily chart you can see from the rsi down below it's at 34.88 and then when we take a look at our moving averages here on the chart we are below the 200 day the 50 day and as well as the 21 day EMA and it's clear to see that SoFi is in a bear market trading below all of our major moving averages so right away as you can see we ended up filling in that gap at 578 and if you remember what I said in my previous video if we continue to see weakness in these markets and SoFi sells off we want to see support coming in at around five dollars and six cents also keep in mind of the 52 week low at four dollars and 82 cents as well if 506 breaks if you're looking for some strength inside of the play of course sofi need to get back to six dollars once it can get back to six dollars then we want to see it get to the 21 day ema which is at six dollars and 71 cents and like i said before seven dollars has now become a psychological area for this play and this is an area where we could see some resistance we've seen it many times right around that 50 day moving average and right now currently it's at seven dollars and one cent but to get a move like that from sofi for the coming week we need a lot of buying coming into the market and the way how it's looking right now I can see a downtrend continuing since we have been doing a consistent pattern of forming lower lows and as well as lower highs as well now let's move on to the short interest information so we're going to take a look at the short interest information for SoFi so the off exchange short volume ratio is at 47.80 percent and then for the off exchange short volume it is just over 7.66 million shares scrolling down on the page the short shares available is at 9.7 million updated just now and then for the short ball fee rate it is at 2.12 percent when we take a look at the history of the short volume we could see for the close of the ninth it is at 50.54 and then for the close of the tenth being at 47.80 and then when we take a look at the short interest percentage of the flow being at 18.02 percent SoFi does have short squeeze potential now let's move on to the order flow distribution now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for SoFi. So we see on the inflow, it is at 45.76 million. And then on the outflows at 42.45 million. So we actually had an inflow day. Taking a look at the breakdown on the large, it was 0.85 million. On the medium, it was 28.14 million. And then on the small, it was 16.77 million. Taking a look at the outflow side, you can see on the large, it was 1.95 million. On the medium, it was 26.32 million. And then on the small, it was 14.18 million. Taking a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, you could see for today, June the 13th, we had that outflow of negative 1.1 million. Analyzing the numbers even further for the small scale orders that tend to represent the retail side, you could see that we had more buying than we had selling. And then when we take a look at what happened on the medium, we had more buying than we had selling. And then for the large represents whales, institutions, and funds, we had more selling than we had buying. 
And then when we take a look at the turnover ratio, it was at 5.56%. So this is not too bad for a volatile stock like SoFi. It does see a lot of trading volume. We also have to take into consideration that there's a lot of selling pressure in the markets as well. And the fact that it had an inflow day still shows that there's interest on the retail side. So let's move on to the final thoughts and we'll go over some more details. So for my final thoughts for SoFi, when it comes to the price action, so we have the 21 day EMA, which is at $6.71. And with the price action that we had today, we were nowhere near that. So what does this show us? It is bearish. It is also showing a continuation of more lower highs and as well as lower lows. And if you guys remember, I said that it had a gap to fill around $5.78. Of course, it has filled in this gap, but it also has opened up another gap to the upside, which is around $5.86. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. But there is that strong possibility we could have that test of $5.06. Check out my previous videos, I talked about that. And if we get down to $5.06, we have to start thinking about the 52 week low, which is around $4.82. It's not too far off, and if the market continues to sell off, SoFi could get down to these levels. But there is that question, the reverse stock split. Many investors do not wanna to get too close to this play whatsoever. We do have the CEO who is continuing to buy up shares as well, but at the end of the day, that is still going to be a concern. So if you are thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you do your homework and you do your due diligence. But as far as the performance of the stock, it's really going to be dependent on how the market is performing. So far, it has been fairly weak. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty since those CPI numbers came out last week. And we also do have the Fed meeting that's going to be coming. And we want to get the update in regards to that 75 basis point hike. If it ends up happening, we could see a potential sell-off continue. But we also have to understand it has been selling off quite a bit and a turnaround may be around the corner. I'm not guaranteeing it, but I just want you to know the levels to the downside. As far as for the upside is concerned, again, we need price action above that 21 day EMA. So you want to get it to at least $6.71 and then see if we can make that move to $7. Keep in mind, $7 is now a psychological area for this play. Also, when we went on Fintel, taking a look at the short interest information, it does continue to have short squeeze potential. But in order to force a short squeeze, we need to have some more buying volume coming into the play. If we don't have that, then of course, we're gonna to continue to see the stock decline. And as well, shorts are gonna be taking advantage of this. And that's part of the reasons why I always tell you, before you buy into these plays, have a strategy. It doesn't matter if you're an investor or whether you are a trader. The reason why this is important, because a lot of plays and a lot of companies especially growth stocks are going to be getting hit hard with the environments that we are in and you have to make sure that you plan ahead for this the last thing that you want to do is be buying at the highs or buying at prices that'll have you saying you know what i should have waited because i could have got it at a much better price again always think ahead there's no reason to rush there's no reason to have fomo we are in a bear market so that is why having a strategy is key and i'm going to keep making sure that you guys remember that so i hope you enjoyed this video and i can't wait to see how the stock performs going into tomorrow we'll talk soon